Splinter 4.0 is already in development with amazing new features coming to simulation nodes and it's getting more comparisons to Houdini being called Houdini Lite. But how do they actually compare and what's the future of simulation nodes at Blender? Now, if you watch the Blender Studio channel at all, they oftentimes will give information about roadmaps and we can take a look at simulation nodes and see that it is going to be getting some additional simulation physics access and also some simple one-click solutions so you don't have to build everything from scratch in the future. How about Houdini? First of all, it's important to note that Houdini is a massive industry behemoth. It's used at places like Walt Disney, Animation Studios, Pixar, DreamWorks, Double Negative, ILM, MPC, Framestore, Sony Pictures, Scanline Visual Effects, Method Studios, The Mill, and more. It is an absolute powerhouse for simulation. Visual effects play a large role in creative products, but they're time consuming, render intensive, and difficult to control. Dynamic Visual Effects Pack aims to solve all that. With over 25 visual effects assets, you can drag and drop into your scene with easy to use exposed controls. Annotated graphs to help you learn and customize further. And the best part is nearly everything renders super fast in either EV or cycles. Let's dive in and take a look at how some of these can help save you time. So what exactly makes Houdini so special? Well, first of all, it's completely node based. You can access anything within the software via a node-based system. Whereas in Blender, you're limited to certain aspects that Geometry Nodes has control over, Houdini pretty much gives you control over everything. Likewise, aspects of Houdini are not as separated. So Blender, we have a very defined modeling section, grease pencil section, video editing section. In Houdini, everything is very much more tied together and accessible within one another. Now, when looking at all the different operators and things that make up Houdini, they have surface operators, meaning they have a much more viable procedural modeling system. You're able to manipulate particle systems. They have channel operators, which are kind of like attributes, and they work with procedural animation, but also can help with audio manipulation. They have compositing operators, dynamic operators for their simulations, which are fluid, cloth, rigid body, and more. They have shading operators that can represent a dozen or more different shading types for several different renderers. You have render operators for building networks to represent different render passes. They have VOPs, which are VEX operators, where you can actually build custom nodes. You can either do this via nodes or via scripting. Then they have lighting operators where you can access the lighting information and control all of that. Now, it's worth noting, too, that they have many different solvers for certain dynamics. So they're known for their incredibly powerful dynamic systems that can be controlled via nodes and tied into varying systems. What does this mean? It means that they have rigid body dynamics, fluid dynamics, wire dynamics, cloth simulation, crowd simulation, fire simulation, and some of their things like cloud and pyro are actually full-blown VDB simulators as well. Not only do they have all these simulations, but they're incredibly high-end and highly optimized for performance and likewise, they also have multiple options. So they may have multiple different ways, just like Blender has two different fluid sims built in, they can have multiple different ways to simulate for each one that might be better depending on your situation. Now, when it comes to things like render engines, it comes packaged with two, Matra and Karma, but Karma is their new render engine, which is a USD path tracing based render engine. But how does Geometry Nodes compare? Well, of course, we have a lack of simulations in comparison. We do have simulations in Blender, but they're not all accessible in Geometry Nodes. With the new simulation nodes, we're looking to change that. However, currently, if you wanted to build full sims, you'd have to do it from scratch rather than calling on the existing simulations. It's also worth noting that the simulations in Blender, albeit that are very good, are still not as good as the ones packaged with Blender, are still not as good as the ones packaged with Houdini. We also have notably less flexibility in Blender. And why is that? That's because we have lack of access to different portions of the program. So for example, you could actually take a fire simulation and plug that into a particle system inside of Houdini, meaning that you're basically have no limits when it comes to how you can combine elements to create whatever type of effect you're looking for. Houdini also comes with a lot of pre-built systems. So when it comes to geometry nodes, you're gonna be building a lot of things from scratch. And this is something that, as we mentioned before, the developers are looking to change in Blender. But as it currently stands, you pretty much have to build everything from scratch. Whereas Houdini will come with node packages that can actually do some of these things in presets. And of course, one of the most important elements is speed. 
Houdini is much faster for these type of calculations. When you think about it, Geometry Nodes is part of Blender, whereas Houdini is entirely based around the system. And thus it has a specific render engine dedicated to these graphs, and you can even compile these graphs and run operations much quicker. But don't let this discourage you. Geometry Nodes is still a very powerful tool with a lot of features that can really get you a lot of unique results. And especially if you're creative, you can create some really interesting animations and also some really intelligent systems to make your scenes move faster and a bit more procedurally. So let's talk about which one's right for you. Should you aim for Houdini or should you aim for Blender? Well, it depends on what your goals are. Which one's a bit more beginner friendly? Now I reached out to a couple of my visual effects artist friends who work in large studios that work with big brands like Nike and they use both Houdini and Blender depending on what the project calls for at the time. And I asked them which one's more beginner friendly, what did they recommend and for who? And here's what I can tell you, Blender, and Houdini, in terms of learning how to do the systems, it's, it's a pretty similar learning curve in terms of learning each one. But why you might wanna consider Blender is if you're not currently looking for incredibly deep simulations and you're looking to use it for more beginner level or entry level type node-based systems, you should really stick with Blender because it's gonna do everything you need. Geometry nodes does have a lot of depth and possibilities. However, if you're serious about getting into simulations, you wanna seek out a visual effects role in the industry, you might wanna consider looking into something more like Houdini. What if you're unsure? What if you're just learning and getting started? Well, maybe start out with Blender because Blender is free. It's a great introduction into procedural node-based systems. And if you decide that that's really clicking with you and something that you wanna dive deeper into, then go check out Houdini. And as I said, most of my friends that work within the visual effects artist industry use both, and they switch between each software depending on what they need. They switch between Houdini, Cinema 4D, Maya, and also Blender.